The objective of this lesson is to become familiar with addition and subtraction strategies in fourth grade. In this lesson, the terms algorithm, standard algorithm, and strategy will be used. An algorithm is a sequence of steps, if followed, is guaranteed to reach some goal. A standard algorithm is based on decomposing numbers into base 10 units and then carrying out single digit computations with those digits. A strategy is a flexible method that is based on an understanding of numbers and varied depending on the numbers involved. Place value is central to students' understanding in mathematics. In third grade, students learn strategies that rely on a strong foundation of place value, the properties of operations, and different strategies of addition and subtraction. Students were introduced to a standard algorithm conceptually using base 10 blocks. In fourth grade, students become fluent with the standard algorithm and subtraction algorithm. Students are taught strategies for different ways of seeing and representing mathematical thinking. One of my favorite quotes in math states, it is better to solve one problem five ways than five problems one way. By using different strategies, we can have different approaches to the same problem. In future lessons, we will discuss the strategies in more detail. This lesson is designed to give us a general understanding of each. We will solve the following problem using partial sums and the standard algorithm. Christian and Blaine mowed lawns for money during the summer. Christian earned $345 and Blaine earned $276. How much money did Christian and Blaine earn together? First, we will discuss the partial sums method. It is an algorithm that shows the relationship between the value of sums and the placement of these sums. In the problem, we need to find out how much money Christian and Blaine earned together. In order to do so, we need to add $345 and $276. First, we will write out the problem, 345 plus 276. We add in partial sums from left to right most often, but I could also work right to left. There are advantages to working left to right. In reading, we read left to right, so it's natural for students. And working with the largest units first yields a closer approximation earlier. First, we add 300 and 200 to total 500. Then, we add the tens, 40 and 70, total 110. We would put this directly below 500. Next, we add the ones, 5 and 6, total 11. We place that below 110. When placing the numbers, we make sure to have the correct place value lined up. The ones are in the one column, the tens in another, and so on. We have found all the parts of the answer, but we are not finished. When making cookies, it isn't enough to get all the parts, but you have to combine them to get the cookie dough. In partial sums, we can think about it the same way. We have all the parts similar to the ingredients in a recipe. We combine the parts by adding 500 and 110 equals 610. We add the 11 to total 621. So 345 plus 276 equals 621. Partial sums is considered an algorithm because there are set steps we follow to get the answer. Next, we will solve the same problem using the standard algorithm. First, we write 345 plus 276. We start on the right and add the ones. 5 plus 6 equals 11. If we combine 10 of the ones together, we can regroup it to the tens place and record 110 and 11. Next, we add the tens. 1 plus 4 equals 5 and 5 plus 7 equals 12 representing 12 tens. 12 tens is composed of 100 and 2 tens. We record the 2 and the tens and regroup the 1 to hundreds. Next we add 1, 3, and 2 hundreds. This totals 6. So 345 plus 276 equals 621. Christian and Blaine earned a total of $621. The next part of our lesson, we will discuss subtraction strategies. Chloe had a sticker book full of 425 stickers. She used 278 of her stickers in an art project. How many stickers does Chloe have left? We will first solve the problem using the standard algorithm. We will draw pictures representing the base 10 model to show the steps that are happening in the standard algorithm. By the end of fourth grade, students should not need to draw a pictorial representation of the problem. First, we write 425 
minus 278, lining up the ones with the ones, 10 with the tens, hundreds with the hundreds. Then we will draw the base 10 representation of 425. I would draw four boxes representing four hundreds, two sticks representing two tens, and five dots representing five ones. We will start at the right. We read five minus eight. We know that we cannot subtract eight from five, so I decompose one of my tens into 10 ones. We then have 15 ones. We record this on our algorithm. We can take eight away from 15, leaving seven ones. Next, we subtract the tens. We will decompose one of the blocks representing hundreds into tens. We have 11 tens, and I can subtract the seven tens. This leaves us with four tens. Finally, we subtract the hundreds. We have three hundreds remaining and subtract two. This leaves us with one hundred. We have one hundred, four tens, and seven ones. So, 425 minus 278 equals 147. Chloe has 147 stickers left. Another way we can solve the same problem is by using expanded form. Expanded form is decomposing each digit into its value. This strategy helps students see the values change as the regrouping takes place. 425 minus 278. First, we would break apart the numbers into expanded form. 425 minus 278. First, we need to subtract the ones. We can't subtract eight from five ones, so we decompose 110 into ones. This gives us 15 ones and then we can subtract eight, leaving seven ones. Next, we look at the tens. We'll need to regroup 100 into tens. Then, we have 11 tens, valuing 110. 110 minus 70 is 40, four tens. Finally, we subtract the hundreds. 300 minus 200 is 100. So we have 100, 40, and seven, totaling 147. Chloe has 147 stickers left. The objective of this lesson was to become familiar with addition and subtraction strategies in fourth grade. We met this objective by solving addition problems with partial sums and the standard algorithm, and solving subtraction problems using the standard algorithm and expanded form.